Hi, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Meet the President Q&A with Gettysburg College. I'll give you all a few minutes to join us here. And uh, hi, class of 2026. <laughs> Thank you all for being here tonight. All right. We are just about to get started. So again, thank you all for joining us and congratulations on your acceptance to Gettysburg. We're very excited for you. Uh, I'd like to kick things off by letting you all know first that this session will be recorded. Um, and I'd like to begin by introducing myself. My name is Phoebe Dosher. I am a senior at Gettysburg College. I am an English with a writing concentration and theater arts double major. And I'm also the editor in chief of our campus news publication, The Gettys Version. So I'm sitting all in front of you tonight to introduce you to our college president, Bob Giuliano. Um, I'm very excited to talk with him tonight and do this Q&A. First, he's going to give a brief introduction and talk to you all about Gettysburg. And then we'll start going into the Q&A. So please start thinking about questions you want to ask and put some questions into the Q&A uh, at the bottom of the Zoom. So welcome to President Giuliano. Phoebe, thank you. And again, let me join Phoebe in welcoming everybody to uh, tonight's session. As Phoebe said, I'm the president of the college and I want to also extend my heartiest congratulation on your admission to Gettysburg College. And what I really would like to do, to do tonight is to introduce you a little bit to the very special community that you've been admitted to join. Uh, and again, congratulations. Each year we recruit and enroll some of the most talented and dedicated students from around the world. And from everything I've heard, this is a particularly extraordinary class. And so let me extend to you again, that correct congratulations on this terrific milestone in your life. It is certainly well-deserved. Now, of course, we know that no accomplishment is reached alone. So I'd also like to take a moment to congratulate your parents, your grandparents and other loved ones. And to those parents, grandparents and other loved ones on the call tonight, I'd say this. This is among the most widely known and widely respected liberal arts and sciences colleges in the nation. And your students admission here is not by accident. It means they've demonstrated grit and perseverance in the face of all too many obstacles over the past few years. It means that they are ambitious and creative and problem solvers. And above all, it means that they want to make a difference in the world and in the lives of others. And this is precisely the sort of student we attract here to college students like Phoebe, students of exceptional character and drive. And I really do hope you take a full measure of pride in the person your student has become. Now, Phoebe and I want to leave plenty of time both for our conversation and for your questions and answers, but let me offer at least a couple of observations about why I was drawn here to Gettysburg just a couple of years ago and why this is unlike any other community I've encountered in my 30 years in higher education. First and foremost, and I think you'll hear about a lot about this tonight, it is about our people. This is a place defined by lifelong partnerships that form here. From day one, our faculty will embrace you as a contributing colleague. They'll challenge you, they'll support you, and they'll help you realize your highest ambitions regardless of whatever field you choose to pursue. You're also gonna to belong to a network of 30,000 alumni who are motivated to help you build a dynamic and fulfilling career, a career that will matter to you. They're gonna open doors for you to help you land internships and professional opportunities. And finally, you're gonna be surrounded by a community that believes in you, that cultivates your talents, that cares about your well-being, and that celebrates your uniqueness. And all of this matters enormously in this community. So here's the point. This is not only a place where you're going to grow as a student, but it's a place where you're gonna discover how to use what you've learned here to build a better world. And I can't imagine a better environment to spend one's formative years. That's the first reason. The second powerful reason that drew me here and that makes this such a special place is our location. If you really wanna change the world, study in a place that changed it. And what happened in Gettysburg shaped the course of American democracy and with it, 
uh, the course of our nation and our society. Here, you will live and learn in the echo of Lincoln's enduring words. As a community, we dedicate ourselves to the unfinished work that he personally charged us to complete. And we do so by leveraging the major cities of influence near us, Washington, DC, Philadelphia, the state capital of Harrisburg. And we do this to advance the new and pressing work of our time. In my view, there's no setting that is more inspiring or ideally situated to do this work than right here in Gettysburg. Finally, the third reason this college is like nowhere else is our distinctive approach to the liberal arts and sciences. You come here and you will receive among the most personal and student-centered educational experience in our nation. Students are at the heart of everything we do here. And we don't want you to thrive just in your first job after graduation. We want you to thrive 40 years into the future in jobs that haven't even been dreamed of yet. And so whether you pursue a major in the arts, the humanities, the sciences, the social sciences, we are intentional about providing you with the opportunities that bring your education to life through things like study abroad, hands-on research experiences, career immersions, and your involvement in our transformative programs, like the Eisenhower Institute, the Center for Public Service, the Garth White Leadership Center, and our Cross-Disciplinary Science Institute. It's this combination of classroom learning and of real-world experiences that distinguishes us as a modern liberal arts and sciences college. More importantly, it's what will equip you for the world that is and the world that awaits. A Gettysburg education is truly lifelong. So our people, our place, our approach, these three characteristics form what we call a consequential education. An education that will give you greater insight into who you are, what you want to accomplish, and how you will define and lead your own consequential life. That's a promise we make to you. So again, let me offer you my congratulations on your acceptance to Gettysburg. I look forward to our conversation today as you determine whether this special community is the place that you want to call home for the next four years. Again, thank you. With that, Phoebe, over to you. Thank you, President Giuliano, for those lovely remarks. And again, welcome everybody tonight. We're going to start off this Q&A by asking the first question. What makes Gettysburg different from other liberal arts colleges? Well, Phoebe, I'm going to be interested in your take on that as well in a moment. So Phoebe thinks she's asking me questions. I'm going to turn them back on her throughout the course of our evening together. But I talked a little bit about this. It's the commitment we've made to what we're calling a consequential education. It starts in the classroom, of course. And I hope, Phoebe, you'll have a chance to reflect on this, the really special relationship students have with the faculty. But it transcends that. It is sort of the way in which it, it was alluded to in my comments, the partnership, the full sense of partnership that students have in shaping themselves and this community in the classroom, outside of the classroom, in all that we do here. And we do it not just because it's the right thing to do, but we also do it, I think, for the reasons I alluded to in my comments, which is there is something about the nature of this land and what it has witnessed that isn't just a historical lesson, but it's actually a call to action. It's a sense that our students want to be in the arena. Uh, regardless of what they choose to do, they want to get involved. Um, and I think we have a place in which our students have voice, they have an encouragement to be involved. They have partners in the faculty and the college as a whole. And over the course of the four years, I hope and believe they grow enormously because of that partnership that I don't think you can find in too many places. But Phoebe, reflect on your, I mean, you're months, weeks now, I'm actually away from graduate. I shouldn't say that to a senior, but you're weeks <laughs> away from graduating. What do you make of your four years here? I have to say it is everything that you've said and more. Um, one of the biggest things that I've picked up on from being at Gettysburg is the people. And I know President Giuliano has talked about this a lot, but the reason I chose Gettysburg in the first place was because I arrived on campus with my family and we started to meet professors, faculty that I would have for the next four years. We started to meet people who were working in you know, the dining center. And we even met my advisor and soon to be professor in the theater department, Professor Chris Kaufman. And my family turned to me and said, Phoebe, these people are like family. They will become your family. And this place feels like home. 
And I think something that defines a Gettysburg experience beyond just feeling at home with the people around you, with the faculty that are so dedicated to your success and willing to take any point in their time in their day to speak with you and to help you through things um, is the incredible opportunities that you have to become a leader in the community, to become involved in what you want to accomplish. I arrived on campus and I knew I wanted to write. I knew I wanted to perform on stage. And as soon as I got here, I auditioned for my first musical and I got a part and I started writing for the Gettysburg and I became the editor. So I think Gettysburg students take the initiative they have when they arrive on this campus to pursue all these pathways that they want to accomplish. And I think that's something that's so distinctive to Gettysburg because every student I've met is the most driven and very kind person, you know? So people hold doors open for you. People help you and support you and believe in you. So that's something very distinctive about the Gettysburg education that I've had and something that I will take with me for years and years to come. And in many ways, Phoebe, you're reflective. What you've described is that you have a couple of majors. Uh, I know this year you were in two big plays. You were the editor of the Gettysburg and you're doing this now. It's a reflection of the opportunities students have at this college, uh, again, where we want students to be involved. Um, it's an interesting world out there. And this is the opportunity that students have during these special four years uh, to experiment, to explore, uh, to learn a little bit more about themselves by engaging in this wide range of opportunities that we provide to students both on campus and off campus. And in many respects, uh, Phoebe is emblematic of that. Thank you. <laughs> now, President Giuliano, I'd like to ask you next about what Gettysburg College how Gettysburg College takes advantage of our unique geographic location. Wow, in so many different ways. I'm gonna give a, a, a small example, but I think it speaks really volumes about what we do. Um, I'm in a building, by the way, that um, during the course of the battle turned into a field hospital. And my window looks out over um, one of our yards. And this year, our uh, faculty led students through an archeological dig. Uh, into determining whether or not they could learn more about the house of a guy by the name of Jack Hopkins. Jack Hopkins was an African-American custodian at the college at the time of the Civil War. Uh, and our students just didn't want to learn in the classroom about what his experiences might have been like. They wanted to get their hands literally dirty uh, as they did this really remarkable dig that will continue next year. It's an example of our trying to use this campus and our location as a living lab, uh, laboratory. That's one example. You will hear us talk about the Eisenhower Institute. So President Eisenhower was in Gettysburg before he became President Eisenhower, before uh, his leadership role in World War II, and he retired to Gettysburg after his presidency uh, and was actively involved in college life in a thousand different ways. Uh, we have something called the Eisenhower Institute that has a location both here and in Washington, D.C. And it gives our students the opportunity to um, um, explore Washington through internships, through conversations with public policy leaders um, um, in a variety of different ways uh, that, again, brings the world to our students. I'll give a third uh, example. Our Center for Public Service, which you heard, 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 heard me mention in my opening comments, um, we have students who want to get involved and they have the opportunity to get involved in Adams County, the county in which we're involved and in which we're located. Um, and again, students learning about themselves, learning about the world by virtue of their ability to get engaged locally and nationally, given this distinctive location that we have. We're 80 miles outside of Washington, DC, 45 miles outside of the state capital that helped define the last presidential election. It's a pretty unique opportunity. Phoebe, have you found that you've been able to take advantage of the location? Absolutely. I mean, what you were saying in the beginning about this being a historical place to live and learn and grow is so true. I mean, every day I wake up and I realize that we're living in a place that's steeped so much in history and that we have the opportunity to explore that. I'm not a history major, but I've learned so much about the Civil War. I've walked on the battlefield and that's not something you can get everywhere else. I think that's so unique. My roommate takes runs on the battlefield every week. So I think that that being able to steep ourselves in this history and experience it firsthand is something unlike no other. That's very unique to Gettysburg and 
uh, incredible. So that's part of it too. I've also gone to DC as well many times for classes, my first year seminar, which is a seminar that you take during your first year at Gettysburg. Um, took a visit to DC within the first few months of being here. And we visited the Shakespeare Folger Library and we went to museums. And I lived, I went to DC yesterday actually, and I saw the cherry blossoms through a trip through the school. So we get to experience all these incredible cities that are around us and also be living in a place with so much history. And I've enjoyed that so much. You may get to this otherwise, but maybe this is a time, Phoebe, we should say a word or two about the first year walk. Um, because it really does bear in our location. And so uh, President Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address uh, just a couple of miles from where I'm seated today. And on the um, second day that our students, our first years are on campus, um, we all convene in the chapel um, and we take a walk um, from campus and retrace the steps that our students took with President Lincoln when he delivered the Gettysburg Address. Um, and so we walk through the campus into the town and then into the cemetery where the students hear the Gettysburg Address delivered again, uh, and then someone reflects on it. Uh, this year, it was a faculty member from Lithuania. And it was absolutely fascinating to hear an international perspective on why these words have meaning, not just to us, uh, but across the world. And it's another example about how we use the history of this place as, again, a, a way to think about who we are and what we want for ourselves. Um, and I think it's one of the most wonderful traditions that we have here. It's really powerful, it's really moving, and it builds community right there in the second day of our first year's experience on campus. Yes, I agree with you 100%. I was going to mention that that is one of my favorite traditions of Gettysburg. And we are a community with many traditions. Um, I've gone on the first year walk probably three times now with the Gettysburgian twice and once as a first year myself. And every time it still feels magical to walk into the Gettysburg Cemetery and to, you know, just feel immersed in the history and walk through and see the monuments and feel this collective sense of community with you know the first year class and also with this new place that will be our home for the next four years so i completely agree with you and that gives us a great segue into the next question i was going to ask which is uh can you talk a little bit about the traditions at gettysburg and what perhaps might be a uh, favorite tradition of ours. <laughs> well, the first year walk is absolutely a favorite tradition, though Phoebe's about to experience one of the other traditions, though she may be a little whimsical and nostalgic about it. So um, one of the other things that happens when students come here, and again, my building is called Pennsylvania Hall, um, uh, and it is one of the oldest buildings on the campus. And when you arrive to campus, um, you will walk through the building in one direction as a symbol of your entering the academic community that will be your home for the next four years. And then uh, in a few weeks, Phoebe and her classmates will walk through in the other direction, symbolizing their readiness to leave the campus, not the community, they will be lifelong members of the community, but to leave the campus and to um, begin the life that follows from their time here. And so I've seen this happen now, and it is a powerful moment as the students uh, get that whole sense of reflection of having been here for four years, thinking about what this means as they take that symbolic act of walking through. That's one example. I'll give you one other example, which is in my first year here, I didn't understand this, but it was the week before Thanksgiving and I was walking across campus. It was 7.30 in the morning. Students are not normally up at 7.30 in the morning. And I saw a bunch of students sitting outside our student union building. And for the life of me, I could not understand why there was a line of students sitting outside the college union building at 7.30 in the morning. Well, we have now, Phoebe, you can probably finish the story. Why were they sitting outside the outside of the Cub at 7.30 in the morning in a cold November day? They were lined up for Servo Thanksgiving. <laughs> and what is that? So our dining hall on campus is something we affectionately refer to as Servo. And every year around Thanksgiving, before we leave for break, the college hosts its own Thanksgiving for us. The campus dining hall makes an entire Thanksgiving dinner for all students to go to. And all the faculty and staff at the college serve you your Thanksgiving dinner, including President Giuliano. <laughs> And it's an incredible experience to go and sit with your friends who you've made at Gettysburg, who you're 
likely thankful for, just as thankful for as you might be your own family, and to enjoy a Thanksgiving dinner surrounded by faculty, surrounded by staff, surrounded by people in the community, and it's actually very, very delicious. It's probably sometimes better than Thanksgiving at home, if that, if I'm allowed to say that. Edie's so. mom is not listening to this, I'm hoping, or dad, whoever does the cooking at, they, at Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, it is, it's an enormously fun event. And here's a little hint of the sort of way we take care of our students. This year, I heard that a faculty member reserved the first 10 minutes of his class to teach students how to carve a turkey because we don't carve the turkey, you all carve the turkey. And so Ian Isherwood, a professor of history, uh, put up a video to help the students understand, here's how you can actually effectively carve a turkey. When I walk around, I will say that the quality of carving is a little variable. <laughs> Yes, it's one of my favorite traditions at Gettysburg, and it's true, we do stand outside and wait for many hours because it's worth it. <laughs> we have to hold places in line so we can go to class and come back. <laughs> I was so, surprised by it. Let me just put it this way. I didn't understand it. it was, I'd been on campus for three or four months at that point. No one had told me that's what I was supposed to expect. <laughs> So President Giuliano, I just wanted to circle back to something you were talking about with commencement and how we walk through Penn Hall during convocation, opening convocation, our first during orientation on campus, and then we walk back through the other direction for graduation commencement. I just wanted to talk, talk about the importance of relationships with faculty and all the people who have helped you along the way. And if you could kind of go into how the academic experience and the program at Gettysburg is distinctive and important and how we build relationships with our professors that lead us to that moment at commencement. Well, I'm gonna start at the moment of commencement because when Phoebe graduates in a few weeks, uh, she will get what is called, called a stole of gratitude. Um, and it is a stole that will have her class year on it. And she's asked to, she will be asked to give it to someone who most profoundly influenced uh, her time here at college. It could be um, Regina at, at, at Servo, who is checks people in, knows everybody by name, and helps create the community. It could be Chris Kaufman, her advisor in theater arts. It could be her parents. It could be someone who has really influenced their time here. And it's a reflection of something that matters to us, which is an acknowledgement. And I said this in my opening comments that none of us do this alone. Um, we do it by virtue of the support of an entire community. And when you come here, you will hear and see and experience the commitment of the faculty to help you through things, um, to help you thrive, uh, but also to help you when you're struggling. Um, and both will happen, right? It's a four years of growth and exploration, as I said, uh, of challenge and um, triumph. Um, but our faculty truly are involved. I'll give an example of the sort of hands-on activities that takes place. We have this um, summer research problem called, program called XSIG. And every year I visit with the students who get to work with the science faculty in small numbers on a research project that often will lead to a publishable paper. It's, that's phenomenal in and of itself. But they have lunch every day with the other students in other labs doing other work. And it's called cross-disciplinary because students from one lab will present to the other students uh, and give them the opportunity. Maybe you're in a physics lab, you're hearing what's happening in biology. Uh, and it's, example, it's an example of two things simultaneously, the intimacy of the relationship with the faculty, but also something that I emphatically think is essential to a good education and that happens well here. We learn from each other. You learn in the class, but you learn from student, your fellow students in a thousand different ways, whether it's on the stage as Phoebe um, has been or in the Gettysburg um, in the classroom, on the fields, um, we learn from one another and the faculty foster an environment where that can happen. Um, my main urging when you come here um, is not to be bashful, get to know the faculty because remember they chose to come to a school of 2,400, 2,500 students where they wanted to know the students. I walk across campus, the faculty know students by name. Um, you will find support here, you will find a home here, you will find encouragement here, you will find the ability to do what you want to do here. Phoebe, I'm hoping that has been, I mean, I know it has been true for you, but um, could you say a word or two about, so I see it from one perspective, you see it in a much more intimate way than I do. 
Absolutely. And this kind of ties back to what you were talking about at the beginning about faculty being very close with students. We have very small class sizes and we all are on a very personal first name basis with all our professors. They can call us out in class and hold us accountable in these challenging academic environments, but they also have their office doors wide open all the time through email. They're always willing to talk. I. I was speaking earlier about my advisor in theater arts, Professor Chris Kaufman. I just met with him last week and I he just asked me how I was doing. We just talked and I told him how things were going. I went to him for advice about next steps in my life and I talked to him about the opportunities I've had this semester. And it's that kind of relationship that people build with faculty where they feel they feel that, like they can succeed in the classroom because the faculty trust and believe in them. And I think that's something that's really important. When I arrived on campus, there were certain things that I didn't even believe myself about. But as soon as a faculty member came up to me personally and said, no, you can accomplish this, you can do this, I succeeded so much more and I knew I could. So that has been totally my experience. I've had such a great time with the faculty and I'm very close with a lot of professors. And through the Get version, I've had to reach out to a lot of professors that are not in theater arts or English just to talk to them about stories for the Get version. And every single one of them is always willing to reach out to me and sit down and have a conversation. And I'm close with faculty members. Like I, I spoke to a faculty member in the psychology department last week. I've never taken a psychology class and they were so nice and so willing to talk to me. So there, it feels like home. It feels like family for sure. She even talks to the president and asks him hard questions on behalf of the Gettysburg on occasion. <laughs> yes. And again, office door wide open. <laughs> and it is, you, you said something really important, Phoebe, that I want to underscore. Um, our faculty believe in your potential and their job in part is to see what you can't see of yourself, which isn't surprising, right? Students come here, they're 18 years old, they've had an experience through high school. Um, our job, of course, is to broaden those experiences and our faculty um, have been around the block, right? They, they understand what students can do and they really do see um, more in what our students can accomplish sometimes than the students do. And when that door opens, as Phoebe says, um, boy, it's remarkable what can be unleashed as a result of that. It's so, it's so um, rewarding to see the personal um, and intellectual growth of our students over the course of their four years. And it's more than rewarding, candidly. One of the things I consistently hear is when our students are talking to prospective employers or graduate schools, um, because of the nature of the experience that they have here, they really thrive. Um, I don't wanna go on too long, but I was at a women's lacrosse game the other day and I was talking to a mom. Um, mom had a person who just graduated last year and a first year. Uh, and the person who just graduated was in medical school. And she was commenting about how her daughter who went here was just absolutely thriving and was doing far better than many of her colleagues were precisely because of the architecture around her experience here. The confidence it gave her, um, the ability to feel comfortable engaging intellectually with, with faculty members and not feeling like there are these, this distance between them. That's what I think we do here really well. Um, and as long as you take advantage of it, boy, um, it's a remarkable education that's available. Yes, and it's definitely what you make it. As soon as you arrive here, you will be ready to succeed and you will have everything you need to the potential within you to succeed. And I feel like the opportunities at this college, the people who are here to support you just set that free and are the catalyst for so many more opportunities and success. So this leads us into our next question, which is what is a Gettysburg student like? Huh. Let me start with, I like stories, you may have figured this out. Um, <laughs> I was having lunch with a student, uh, I think it was in the fall, Phoebe. Mm -hmm. um, and the student had a rather unusual background. Uh, the student before she came to Gettysburg and maybe even still while she was at Gettysburg was a circus performer. Um, and so she's a classmate of yours, so you may even know who she is. Um, so uh, she had invited her mentor uh, to come onto campus uh, and talk about what it was like to be a circus performer. And this was a person who um, had gone to a whole bunch of college campuses over the course of his career. And he came here and he then pulled aside the student and said, you have come to a very special place. I have been all over the country, but here's what I saw about Gettysburg College students. They were fearless. 
they were not worried about putting themselves out there. Uh, Phoebe was Little Red Riding Hood uh, in Into the Night. Um, no, yes. Into, into the, the Woods. woods. <laughs> into the Woods this fall. Um, uh, brilliant, by the way. She did a really good job. Um, so they're not afraid of putting them out there. But secondly, and importantly, the students were supportive. Right, you could imagine a place where you would get teased for uh, for jumping in, but people were willing to participate, and they were supported by their classmates to participate. And I think that's emblematic, a part part of what what we are. I'd say one other thing about who our students are, and I've alluded to it throughout my reflections, Phoebe, and that is, um, I'm going to use that phrase again um, that I used about the dig. Our students want to get their hands dirty. Um, they see a problem, they want to tackle the problem. They're not comfortable just thinking sort of the abstract thoughts, they do that, but then they want to figure out, okay, how can I actually get involved? Can I have a practical solution to this problem that's going to make the campus, the world a little bit better? And it's that sense of sort of practical idealism um, that I think defines our students and goes back a little bit to the comment I made about the mom. Uh, about the confidence that our students develop here because they have the opportunity to, to test themselves. They're not walking into their careers or their lives without having been in a leadership role like the editor of the Get His Version. Uh, so they've had to manage a team. They've had to figure out how do I get this thing published? Um, that's real life experience that translates into whatever students are gonna do. And we give our students those opportunities time and time again. Um, so that's what I see, Phoebe, sitting in Penn Hall and talking to students. But you're, you know, you're going to go home tonight and you're going to be surrounded by students. So what do you say? It's so funny that you mentioned the story about the circus performer, because that's actually one of my best friends on campus. Is that right? <laughs> yes. And the funny thing is, I was going to mention this because she is uh, she's an environmental science major at Gettysburg. And we met probably within the first few months of arriving on campus. I was a mutual, I met her through mutual friends and we really hit it off. And we've never been in the same class before. We never really intersect. She's in the science center on campus. I'm usually in the building with, you know, the English classes and the theater department in the theater. And yet we have been the closest friends at Gettysburg for all four years. And I think that also speaks to the Gettysburg student experience because we're a small campus. So it's intimate. We get to know people that outside of our major, we get to know people, you know, who are in Greek life, who aren't in Greek life. We get to know people who are involved in all different kinds of opportunity of activities on campus, like sciences or English. And yet we're still very close and very supportive of each other. So I think that speaks to the community on campus that we build, where it's easy to make friends. I just made a friend in one of my classes a few weeks ago who's also a science major, and we're all we're already pretty close. So I have to say that's one of my favorite things about Gettysburg is being able to get like we get close to the faculty members because it's small classrooms and they can hold us accountable and make sure that we're on top of our work, but also hold us to high standards. It's also we get to get close with people in the classroom and get to know people outside of our major or from all different walks of life. So that's one great thing about being a Gettysburg student. Um, but I'd also say it's really incredible to be close and be able to be very driven with these students. As uh, the editor of the Gettys Version, every month we put out a print edition of our publication in the magazine. And every week we meet as an editorial team and put our thoughts together and gather all our ideas. And we are able to make it happen every month. And every month I wonder, are we going to get this magazine out? And every month we do. And even though all those students in that in that room are involved in the Eisenhower Institute on campus, they're political science majors, they're athletes, they're in, on the swimming team, they're involved in all different types of things, but we all still come together for our common goal and we're all very connected. So students are driven and also dedicated to getting things done. And I love that about Gettysburg because I arrived here very ready to be, you know, around people who were very similar to me and like to, you know, work hard and feel gratified with the work that I do. And that's what I've seen here time and time again. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> so the next question I'd like to ask you is about speaking about students after Gettysburg. What are some of the opportunities that students get after Gettysburg? Um... 
I was I had I was going to say the world is your oyster, but that's probably not very helpful. Um, <laughs> 96% of our students are in graduate school or uh, have, have a job within, I think it's a year of graduation. Um, and really it depends upon what you wanna do. I mentioned in my opening comments, the um, 98%, I'm corrected. Um, um, I mentioned in, the, in my opening comments, the Gettysburg alumni community, 30,000 people strong. And it really is a community, and these are people who will try to help if they can. Here's a concrete example: we have a, we have a J term that we put together that isn't focused on academic pursuits, but sort of on lifelong skills. And so our alumni um, will have the opportunity to talk with students about the career paths that they are interested in. And there have been examples of students um, landing internships as a result of those connections and the opportunity to. Um, the opportunity to um, explore something that you're interested in. And so if it's graduate school, um, I'm going around to all of the academic departments um, uh, this spring just to check in with folks and hearing them talk about how they're working with students who wanna go to graduate school, but also how they're working with students who don't wanna go to graduate school, but are trying to find their first job. Maybe it's a job in a career they're interested in, or maybe it's a job because they need a little bit of break before they go to graduate school. It's a little bit of both, right? Um, and so whether it's the alumni network, whether it's our Center for Career Engagement, um, uh, whether it's through fellow students and the relationships you form with them and the broader um, uh, network they have, you have, you have opportunities to do just a, really an unlimited range of things. Uh, we have folks on Capitol Hill uh, in the middle of understanding the incursion right now, Some senior staffer from a student, a, a predecessor of Phoebe, who's at Harvard Law School right now, to the person I mentioned who's, at, who's in medical school, um, to people who are going into the world of finance in, in New York. Um, uh, it depends upon your aspirations. Our job is to help make sure you find a path that will get you there. And I think we're pretty good at that. Um, by virtue of the way um, we're constructed, the fact that we're so intimate and you will know the faculty member who is determined to help you, not because they should, but because they want to, because they are a friend of yours. They have seen you grow over the course of four years and they are invested in you. The number of times I hear faculty talk about, yeah, I'm still in touch with my uh, with the student who graduated three or four years ago, here's what they're doing in life. It's the nature of the relationship that's formed there. Um, I can assure you that wasn't true in my college. I went to a bigger place. That was not true in my college. Um, uh, so it's a very it's a it's a very different environment. Um, what do you think, Phoebe? I know you're you're not you're not on the other side yet. Um, you still have Almost. you still have weeks to go. Yes, but I have to say, now that I think back at it, I was trying to think through all the experiences I've had at Gettysburg. And I took advantage of the Center for Career Engagement at Gettysburg as soon as I got here. And I have to say, even when I came for my accepted students day, when I was an admitted student to Gettysburg, I was deciding where I wanted to go. I was at a panel for the English department. And this was the only school that I had attended that had specifically mentioned all the incredible internship opportunities that students get to have. And there were students talking about how they worked in the publishing industry, how they worked in the marketing industry, how they worked in the communications industry. And that made me really excited because I knew I wanted to major in English and I knew I wanted to write. And I wanted to be ensured that that would be a possibility for me. So as soon as I was at that panel and I heard that from the students at the English department, I knew it was the right place for me. And since then I've gone to the Center for Career Engagement, a resource to students on campus. And I've had and then look over my resume. I've done a job shadowing with a company in New York City uh, over a break. I've gone to a career immersion trip in Orlando, Florida to visit all like Universal and Disney and the vacation industry and talk about marketing. I've done a few internships myself and I'm exiting Gettysburg with a potential job opportunity. So I have been able to apply myself in many, many different ways to make sure that I'm successful after Gettysburg, which of course is the, you know, what we're all here to do is to prepare ourselves for after Gettysburg. And when I look around myself and see all my senior friends who are ready to graduate with me, they're also ready with, you know, going to graduate school or medical school or going off to a job. And most of all, we're all pursuing what we're passionate about. 
I knew that I wanted to come here and I wanted to write. I knew I wanted to perform and now I'm doing it. And now I'm going into a potential career where I get to write and where I get to do what I'm passionate about because at Gettysburg, all those opportunities came to me. So I'm very excited to be able to do that. And I'm very thrilled that I took advantage of the resources that we have at Gettysburg to make students prepared. And I have to say the Gettysburg network is so strong. I have reached out to so many alumni. I was even at a panel a couple of weeks ago with alumni in the marketing industry. And one of them who is an executive at for a marketing agency literally gave me his phone number. He said, this is not something I do every day, but I'm going to give you my cell phone number so that you can contact me if you want advice about the potential career opportunities that you have. So every single person that I've spoken to is eager to help because they love the Gettysburg community and they love our students. And they're just always there to help. So I have to say I'm very, very, I'm walking into my postgraduate experience kind of happy. And even though I'll be sad to leave this campus, I know that I'll have this community with me forever. And that is so valuable. In fact, Phoebe, aren't you an intern in our communications and marketing office itself? So as another example of your ability to test something that you're interested in, um, and it was a little unusual to have the editor in chief of the Gettys version in our communication shop, but it all worked. Um, it did. <laughs> yes, I actually joined the communications and marketing office at Gettysburg my sophomore year. And I, it's an on-campus job, so I get to get paid and it's an internship and it's something that I love to do. I write stories about Gettysburg students for the campus website, uh, in addition to writing for the Guinness version. And I have had such an amazing time building that professional network with all those individuals in the office. And this is an on-campus position. It's something I've done every semester alongside my classes and everything. So that's been an incredible experience to know that I've been able to build myself professionally throughout the semester consistently. And the same goes for students who are doing research in the labs, which is also counts as an internship um, in the psychology department, in the sciences and chemistry and environmental science. Students are applying themselves here and have professional opportunities, not just over the summer or over breaks, but during the semester itself on our campus. So I am very grateful for that, that I've had that opportunity for the past three years. And as a result, when Phoebe's out in the market, um, she has a rich um, uh, tapestry of experiences upon which she can draw in trying to make the case about why me? Um, right? It's a competitive job market out there, uh, but these hands-on experiences that our students have um, will, give, I think, give them an important edge when they are having those conversations with prospective employers or graduate schools. Yes, and in every in every thing you're going into, there are people who take, who do the business organizations and management major at Gettysburg, and because it's a liberal arts institution, they know how to ask questions and think critically, and they're ready for those job opportunities. So I think that the liberal arts is a very good grounding for any sort of industry you want to go into because of those skills that you build. And I've known it because I've had many opportunities myself, and almost all of my friends have too. <laughs> Well, if folks are on this Zoom, they presumably have thought about the liberal arts and sciences. I do want to underscore the point just, that Phoebe just made. Boy, it's an interesting world out there. And um, uh, I feel passionately that the students who are gonna thrive uh, will, though, will be those students who have the ability, uh, this is a phrase I often use, to learn, unlearn, and relearn, who can be creative, who can look across disciplinary lines, who can lead through change. Um, these are the skills that our students graduate with, and we're quite purposeful about making sure that's what they graduate with. And you see it in Phoebe. I said to Phoebe the other day, I'm not worried about her when she goes out into the world. I'm actually worried about the world when Phoebe encounters it because she's gonna transform it in such a significant way. Um, uh, it's, what, it's what we aspire to do here. Um, and so um, I hope you all will reflect on the opportunities that we provide here in this conversation. And if you have questions, please be in touch. Yes, thank you all so much for being here today. And I'm so glad I was able to talk with you all. Uh, this is just a reminder that you can visit the Gettysburg Admissions website to find more virtual and in-person programs and to make your enrollment deposit. And remember that no matter where you are in the process, please feel free to reach out to the admissions office with questions. This community is always willing to help you out. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's such a pleasure to talk with you all about my experiences. And I really hope to see you on campus. <laughs>
Thank you all. Have a very good night. And again, uh, I look forward to seeing you in the fall. Um, so be well until then. Bye-bye.